Hello class, how are you doing? I'm sure you have heard the news about the coronavirus and uh, we are not able to attend classes this week and uh, we were advised to post our lecture online therefore I'm gonna have a short review regarding section 15-5 about directional derivative the directional derivative remember directional derivative derivative is always going to be a number it's going to be a ratio just like a slope y over x like speed miles per hour therefore directional derivative of a function f of x y as we discussed it is going to become partial derivative of the function respect to x times cosine theta plus partial derivative of y sine theta and sometime they re they replace the cosine theta by opposite over the hypotenuse plus partial derivative of y adjacent over the hypotenuse directional derivative always going to be given uh, will be asked at a distinct point maybe if i give you a function of z which is a function of x and a y and that function is represented by 6x squared minus 5xy plus 2y and they said if this is a surface at the point of one and one, how fast or how slow I'm either going down or going up. If the directional derivative become positive, you're going up. If directional derivative become negative, you're going down. Therefore, in order to know the directional derivative of that surface, at the point of one and one, I need the partial derivative respect to x at that point partial derivative respect to x is going to become 12x which x is 1 minus 5y which y is 1 times cosine of a theta plus partial derivative respect to a y which is a negative 5x x is 1 plus 2 which y is 2 times by itself times the sine of theta yes i'm asking you give me the directional derivative at the point of 1 and 1 at the point of 1 and 1 there are infinitely many directions you can take therefore i have to give you a specific direction and that specific direction must be presented by a unit vector. Therefore, I'm going to ask you, come in the direction of the vector v, which is negative 3i plus 5j. Therefore, you do know that vector negative 3i, 5j, you are coming down in this direction. I want to make sure that vector is a unit vector because if it's not a unit vector is magnitude going to affect the direction the value of the directional derivative and this one is not a unit vector therefore the unit vector is going to become opposite over the hypotenuse and you know i made a mistake right here cosine is not opposite over hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and the sign is opposite over the hypotenuse. Therefore, the unit vector u is going to become negative 3 over square root of 9 plus 25 i plus 5 over a square root of 9 plus 25 j. This is nothing except the cosine of theta, which is x over r, and this is the sine theta, which is y over r. Therefore, your directional derivative at the point of 1 and a 1 is 
12 minus a 5 cosine theta, which is negative 3 over the square root of 34, plus partial with respect to y, negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3, times the sine, which is 5 over the square root of 34. Therefore, the directional derivative of that function at the point of 1 and 1, 12 minus 5 is 7, times negative 3 is negative 21 over the square root of 34. That's negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3, and make it negative 15 over the square root of 34. The answer is going to become negative 36 over the square root of 34. And this is approximately negative 1. Because if this becomes almost 36, the square root of 36 is going to become 1. I'm sorry, the square root of 36 is become 6. Negative 36 over 6 is a negative 6, not negative 1. Therefore, directional derivative is from that point of 1 and a 1. In that direction, if you take one step forward in the x direction, your y value go down sixth unit. Therefore, this is an example of how to find directional derivative. And I will post this one in the echo. And after that, I'm going to continue section 15.5. And I'm going to rewrite the directional derivative as a dot product of two vectors. Thank you.